there are metric system things that I agree with, and the temperature is not one of them. I like Fahrenheit. How? Like, How? It doesn't make because, any sense. Zero is really cold, and a hundred is really hot, and that makes more sense to me. No, than, it doesn't. Oh my oh, god! Oh yeah, like We're forty. Not... Forty is really hot. Oh, it's four. It's thirty-five today. It's real hot out today. <laughs> it makes to perfect sense. It makes perfect sense. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Anime Club After Dark, the podcast that delves into all things anime, manga, and otaku culture related. I'm your host, Alex, but you can call me Senpai. And joining me tonight, I have our poser extraordinaire, Natai. It's good to be here with you, Alex. Is it? Is it good to be back? No, no, it's not. I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 well, hopefully it's it's not all bad because you don't have to deal with just me because we have a returning True. guest to the podcast, a friend of the show, Ian. Hello. Thank you for having me back. Always a pleasure. Take off that hat. <laughs> no. My my goal is to wear a different hat every time I'm on. That's that's the that's the end wait, goal wait. at this point. Wait, that last time you were on, I do think you wore Orioles hat, didn't yeah. you? Uh-huh. <laughs> that's amazing. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh man uh, so before we get started one thing i do want to say um i am recording this right after coming back from otakon um i got the con crud i am sick so i'm sorry for my voice i'm also sorry if i uh cough a couple of times during so this does your wallet. episode yes yeah, so yeah my wallet's <laughs> really really as you can see behind me there are some new adornments this is my stuff from artist alley that i got so um yeah uh, but yeah, I will do my best to not cough directly into the mic and mute myself if I do have to cough. Um, just sorry about that in advance. That's what, um, what I love about like artist, artist Alley is like, I can make fun of you for your choices, but I'm just happy you g gave money to hardworking artists. So, you know, it's a win-win situation. Yes. And I only <laughs> spent cash in Artist Alley, so they didn't have to pay any credit card fees. That's the nice. secret, because as soon as you start not paying cash is when you start spending weight, like... You start. You don't. You, it's easy to keep track of the money when it's cash. As soon as it's yeah, so true. Card down, it's just that's so true. Well, also much. in an artist alley, and this is not just for Otsukon, It's at a lot of conventions, which I highly recommend you go to if you've never been to one. Um, Big up in artist alley in particular. If you pay with cash, more often than not, they'll give you a discount. Well, you get really? a discount because they don't have no, to deal with the fees. There's no tax. Mm. They don't tax the cash payments. There's tax if you pay with the credit card. They also don't have to report those cash payments either. <laughs> Do artists in general in artists tell need to report stuff? If it's uh, like it depends. And I feel like yeah. we're gonna stray off the topic here a little bit too much into if I... Listen, IRS Coon does not know my location. Actually they do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they know everything. I pay my taxes, IRS, I promise. I promise. Uh, <laughs> unlike uh, unlike most anime studios, I pay my taxes. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, um, a big part of the reason Ian is uh, joining us is because what we're talking about tonight is uh, inspired by something he himself put on uh, Twitter. So uh, do you want to talk about that post a little bit, Ian? That's terrifying that I have that much that much power that you would use a tweet that I said <laughs> probably. To grab you and say, come here, we're talking about this. Honestly, I want yeah, to see what the timestamp on, on is this. Yeah, I tweeted this while I was in the car back coming back from AX. Just like on a loop. We're quick so, on the yeah, draw it, here it, in Anime Club After Dark. And to be fair, you were actually uh, quote tweeting someone else. Yeah, it was just the the original tweet is that there are just so many shows nowadays that it's impossible mm. to be able to write and rank like all the show all the shows that are coming out every season. Yeah, and I kind of on top of that was saying that. I, I think that's also caused a thing where there just aren't many shows that like everyone is watching anymore. Mm, yeah. And particularly like seasonal shows, right? Like we have, there's still like a JJK or when attack on Titan was airing that are like big tent pole community shows that everyone's watching, but yeah. that's usually even beyond. Yeah. That usually goes beyond seasons. And it's just like, Oh, we're watching this because everyone cares about it versus mm -hmm. the show that would blow up in that season and everyone would be like, Ooh, what's we're all watching this and be talking about it. And then once it was over, we, everyone would move on to the next big show like that. Definitely. Yeah. It just feels like everyone's too splintered nowadays to be really have. I think the one I use as an example was a race The race is the big one in my mind. That's, that's like, the one I thought about yeah. that season. 
everyone was watching it, but it wasn't like, you know, this tent pole, big manga community that was driving it. Which is, which is weird because that anime came out very shortly after we first started this podcast. And I remember us every week when we got together, we, the, the first thing we talk about is like, so that episode of a race this week, guys, because <laughs> we were all watching it. Like, and when we were, when we first started the podcast, like we would all watch it like very shortly after it came out. So we always were able to talk about it. And yeah. I, I feel like I, I, there's not, that doesn't happen as much anymore. It doesn't. And I think mm-hmm. there's a couple of reasons for it that will, yeah. you know, we'll expand on, but the, the it's weird because there's two big reasons in my mind and they're they're almost different causes that led to the same effect Mm -hmm. where like we talked about we just talked about there's too much too many shows coming out there's too much stuff coming out like 70 or 80 shows a season now and it's just people are overwhelmed and every season every every season i see it now where there's like a few shows people like all these this is really good and then by the midpoint of the season most of them people have dropped off of or they're just not there's mm-hmm. just nothing gets that momentum that, like yeah that traction that i used to where it'd be like this is the show it just feels like well this is the show if you like fantasy or this is the show mm-hmm. if you like sci-fi or this is the show if you want to watch you know an action show or something like that it's no longer the show that everyone's watching mm-hmm. and then the other side of that which kind of relates more to the big really the big shonen because those are the most popular shows a lot of the time but people just read the read the source now yeah like yeah like it, it like if attack on titan came out today it would i think it would still do quite well but it wouldn't mm-hmm. have the same week to week fandom that it did at the time where everyone was like oh my god what's happening what's going to happen like what like theory crafting because there'd yeah. be thousands of people that have been like oh i've already read we already read the oh, i love this manga i read it before the anime came out I just don't remember the last time a a anime has come out that has a source material that's a manga and hasn't had scores of people being like, oh, yeah, you got to watch. This is like, right? Like even ones that are like obscure still have mm-hmm. the manga readers there to tell you. And that's fine. But it just kind of it kind of affects the way the community interacts with it and sort of it's, like week to week. It's really... Like I remember watching in one of in one of your videos, you talk about the same subject, and you mentioned how whenever there's a new anime announced or a new season of an anime announced, most of the comments are like, "Oh, it's gonna cover this amount of arcs. It's gonna cover this one, and you gotta look forward to this specific arc that's gonna come later." It's mm-hmm. it, it's really like that 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 point you made really resonated with me because I do remember when there was it felt like there was a time when like when um. The, the the discussion more was about the excitement of oh I wonder where it's gonna go next the story and who's gonna like produce the show and more about that aspect of the anime rather than a lot of source material readers being like oh it's gonna cover X amount of arcs and gonna it's it's kind of mm-hmm. interesting how that shift in the community happened because it's everywhere now it's like you, you can't miss it it's interesting yeah do you think, Ian, do you think some of that is because, because you mentioned how many people would just go read the source material, material, do you think a lot of that's because of how accessible reading manga yeah. has become, especially reading it so soon after it comes out in Japan? Yeah, I mean, even 10 years ago, unless you wanted, see, even 10 years ago, you could buy some, but mm-hmm. there wasn't a lot of stuff licensed, at least at like yeah. my local bookstore. Um, and so it was really you had to hard. Get creative. <laughs> yeah, unless you wanted to read, you know, scans with fan translations, it was pretty much impossible to read a lot of even fairly popular series. And now, yeah. with the, particularly the Shonen Jump app, is the big one to me, um, where you can read all of those manga whenever you want yeah. for like two dollars a month or whatever it is. I think mm-hmm. it might be two ninety nine now, but it's still fairly very affordable and it's just like it's just like you know why wait i think that's a lot of people i've always been of the mind and it's slow i've slowly been breaking broken down over the last few years (laughs) i've always been of the mind that i'd rather watch it than read it twitter hurt you so bad for anime as a medium if i had to choose but that's that's a whole other conversation where i'm saying that in that if the anime is like a good perfect adaptation like adaptation yeah. not like yeah. i think oh a bad adaptation is better it's it's not but 
Yeah, well, Twitter is the problem. Part of that, I do wonder if it's just because I'm so involved in the community now that I just see. And I know that's part of it. I know there are people who are casual fans that yeah. will mm-hmm. roll into in, onto Netflix and be like, oh, what's this this Don the Don show? That looks interesting. Like, I'm going to watch it and really mm-hmm. enjoy it. And it's not me yeah. having to hear about the manga for two years before it even gets announced. And then Definitely, when it gets yeah. announced, hearing about how how happy or not happy people are with with the adaptation and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, to kind of drive that point home about like how accessible manga has gotten up until, I mean, up until the point where Jojo's anime got made, like the David production one, it was Mm -hmm. still hard to find like Mm -hmm. genuine copies of Jojo's bizarre adventure, Mm -hmm. the manga anywhere outside of Japan. I mean, yeah, there were fan translations of it, but obviously those aren't licensed. Yeah. But once the once the anime came out and it got super popular outside of Japan, like then you started seeing the manga pop up everywhere licensed. Even then, I don't is I've kind of stopped keeping track of it because I know they were doing it pretty slowly. Is the official release on part seven yet? No, not yet. No, um, yeah, it's they're at part, part six. six. Yeah. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. they were at part six while that season of anime, the wall part six was airing. Yeah. yeah. And then I think they're probably close to getting it's just crazy that the official release isn't hasn't released the part yet. that everyone says is their favorite part exactly <laughs> it's, not it's not to be like a special release. hey case. they've released they've released my favorite part and i'm happy about that with, with jojo it's like it's it's an interesting case because it does feel like so many people already experience it in the manga is especially when it doesn't even have an official release like i mean for years now like i've been hearing people like part seven is like araki's magnum opus it's like it's like man it doesn't even have an official release but because people like they will go out of their way to experience these shows like in the manga if they're that like invested in it um it just because the anime got so popular that means that it just that many more people going out of their way to read the manga you know i think it just like an effect of anime growing thus more people are like i'm not gonna wait for the next season i'll just read the manga you know yeah. I think just an effect of that Aside i know from, a lot of people that just they just they'll go well, why wait yeah and you know if you don't care about the specific benefits that an anime adaptation brings to the story then yeah why wait if all you care about is the story there's no yeah. reason not to read it. And if it's easy, go read the source material, go, go read, read the yeah. light novel, go read the manga. Correct me go if I'm wrong. I, I think you and I are like in the same mindset of like on anime being like our preferred way to consume media in terms of like going to the manga, even though you have been like now starting reading more I've, and more manga. It's, I've broken down because I've realized oh. the fact that if I want to experience stories where I don't know what's going to happen and I can like theory craft and stuff, mm-hmm. it literally has to be a, a story where there's no like it's being written right now yeah right like i can never watch juju kaisen and be like oh i wonder what's going to happen because i they, it's already happened like if i uh, want to have that experience where it's like talking with other people about oh i wonder what's going to happen it has to be for a series like that it has to be the manga and that's it, it's to me it's a shame but it's just the way it's the community has evolved that that mindset makes me appreciate like like interacting with people who are not part of the community uh, who still watch anime you know like it sounds Cash. kind of like a stupid comment but like it's like oh it's people who are not on reddit or twitter or even like most anime platforms like to to discuss this kind of stuff they're like they're completely blind to whatever is going on in the manga sphere and they're like it, it reminds me of experiencing and like anime discussions like even five maybe even seven years ago which felt like more people were still like consuming the manga rather uh, the anime rather than discussing like what's going to happen next because they already read the manga you know yeah it used to be that the source conversations were reserved for those spaces and now it's just kind of bled into yeah everything like i I I mean even casual fans now will go read manga or light novels yeah I just don't remember the last show that came out where I wasn't the first thing I heard about it was, oh, this is a great manga, or oh, this is a great light novel, or oh, I love probably an anime original, right? If well, yeah, was, you're a good one. That's you're, come on. 
<laughs> Clearly, <laughs> there is no there is no source I mean, material. John and I, but, but, John and I talk was, about this a lot because mm-hmm. John is like our czar of source material on the show. He loves reading, you know, manga, light novels, web novels, all that shit, and like. It kills him watching a uh, anime original week to week because he can't just go read the rest of the mm-hmm. story. But, like that was kind of a cheeky comment, but but like for real, when was the last anime original that that took the community by storm to that extent of people? Darling the Franks, Wonder Egg. Oh, that Wonder too, Egg yeah. was Which the people most people don't recent think one. about it anymore because they didn't like the ending. But yeah, yeah, Wonder Egg definitely. Well, people is didn't like... like the ending to Darling the Franks either. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, because there were yeah. a couple originals last season that mm-hmm. I was really excited for, and I, I wound up not watching Metallic Rouge because I was told it was not good. That's Bones's Bones's twenty fifth anniversary a... project, yeah, and it wasn't good allegedly. I didn't watch it. Well, I, I thought it. I thought the. I thought it was good, but it suffers from that thing that anime originals often have, where it's good until like the last episode or two. Ugh. That's and then Buchigiri. I didn't think mm. was great, well, at least not great enough to be Did like. Did you end up finishing that? I need to, but I, I watched about half of it and I stopped. I see. And then you know, skate, skate, skate the, was kind of big. Skate for a bit. the infinity was probably the last original that I can remember blowing up to the point where like I still see stuff for it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I, I mean, just, I don't remember if that was before. You or know after. what? Um, so, like, if I'm thinking to one of the bigger, like, even bigger than Skate Infinity, one of the bigger anime originals that, like, I think reached, like, a massive audience, uh, I think Yuri on Ice is probably the biggest one, like, in recent memory. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. And it's funny because it's not even that recent. No. No, it's not. (laughs) Wait. And the movie that was promised all those years ago has been Uh... canceled. It's 2016, right? It was fall 2016. It's the same year as uh, Mom Psycho, so season one. So it was yeah. 2016? I'm, I'm pretty sure it was fall 2016. I think you're right. It was fall for sure. Also, no, was it 2017? Yes, it, it was It was uh, October 2016, yeah. Oh, okay, 2016. That was October massive. 2016. Like, it had yeah, a that's, massive That's reach. a really good example of a show where I, pe- I saw people talking about it every week. That's that's what I called like a water cooler anime because yeah like like every week people would be rushing the second it got released on Crunchyroll to go watch it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's you know something I hadn't considered until we started talking about this is that maybe for some for in some ways it's it's good that shows aren't that aren't that many shows like that anymore because mm-hmm. I just remembered that because of, for, for a water cooler show right like a Darling in the Franks like a, a Yuri on Ice erased. Like that, it it what happens is people feel the need to watch it. Yeah, people go, oh, yeah. I can't miss out. I need to watch this thing everyone's talking about, and that FOMO. leads, and that leads the people that don't like those types of shows to watch watching them. them. Yeah, that's true. And so now I, yeah. I I had not until we we were talking about this right now was the moment <laughs> I was like, hmm, hmm. I mean, so but then really see, John is that way too. John Definitely. is so hype averse. If people start hyping up a show, he'll be like, well, now I'm not going to watch it. It's more nuanced than that. Now he's like, well, if I will watch it, I doubt it will be as good as you guys say it is because you've been hyping it so much. But I mean, and then when it is, he's like, fuck. <laughs> fuck, they're right. I it's, like it. <laughs> that was what happened I mean, to me with Arcane. I didn't want to watch really? the League of Legends oh, show. Man. And then I was like, no, okay, that show's really good. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's not specifically it's not specifically anime, but Arcane is another good example of this, where it felt like when the new episodes came out, people had to go watch them. Yeah, yeah, but I even think. that because of the the way they released it, it was it, like I didn't watch it until all all the Same. episodes were out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me Same. too. Maybe like maybe, I that was a release coming up. That was a new release ideas. schedule. Can we can we since you brought it up, that's something else I wanted to talk about too. Do you think part of the reason that um we may not be seeing as many of these like water cooler anime or anime that are taking over the community zeitgeist is because of streaming um, and how prevalent it's become. So That's tricky it is. So if you're asking me this question at large, just like here in the U S with television, yeah. I would say yes, because mm-hmm. you miss that, you know, like when game of Thrones started airing, it was you, people would oh, watch yeah. it on their TV at the yeah. same time. Yeah. Same with Breaking Bad. Everyone would watch it at the same time on their television. 
And so that's changed dramatically. And I think that's affected why there aren't that many water cooler shows. Um, yeah. In people can general, watch it anytime they want. Yeah. And the with, Game of Thrones, though, with Game of Thrones, though, specifically because beyond people watching it on TV, like live, like that show had such a wide reach that, like, isn't it like one of the most pirated show of all time? Because so many Probably. people were like, I'm not, I'm yeah, not yeah, getting it's... cables or HBO Max for to watch this. Well, because that's the thing. Here yeah. in the US, you needed HBO, which doesn't yeah. come yeah. with cable. You means you had to pay for cable and then mm. you had to pay extra for HBO. And so a lot of people just didn't wouldn't do that. But yeah. to get back to your point about like the binge watch like experience, especially with Netflix, because it's not like it, I'm trying to think of the way we work for our, uh, just like American television, because when Netflix started to blow up, one of the biggest reasons to watch to use Netflix was House of Cards. And that show was massive. People yeah. were like rushing to watch that show, like yeah. those types of like highly produced, like like quality stuff. I don't. Thanks, Kevin Spacey, for ruining the ending to that. By the way, yeah, thanks. I don't. I'm trying to think of like a good equivalent of that in the anime sphere, and I'm. I, I can't think of any show that like was released I, all at I once. Can like that. An, I can think of an I can think of an example where it was done week to week and then it was done binge style and for a lot of people it ruined it for them. JoJo's Part Six. Yes. Yeah. That's a because Netflix ugh. got it and then they decided to release it. It wasn't the whole season like at in once, but it was like chunks of it was the three season chunks. in bulk. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that so was that. Rough. I think stuff like that can kill hype for a show, but I don't think the broader question of like has streaming. If I think streaming has helped, if if nothing else, because it's not yeah. like it's it's honestly honestly it's a little it's a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. It's a two it's a double edged sword. Because I will say that I'm doing a lot of re writing and research about Full Metal Alchemist 2003 lately for a video <laughs> I'm working on. Don't you dare shit talk um, it. Don't you dare yeah, shit talk part it. Part of the reason that i think it's so beloved is because it was on toonami mm. and it was like that was like one of the only shows you could watch easily at the mm -hmm. time without having to figure out yeah. vhs tapes or whatever the internet looked like in 2004 to watch watching it that. in t watching it in nine minute chunks on yeah. youtube that was even oh before youtube God. though and so that at the time that had a, it had a it had a well beloved dub and it had it was easily watchable on a major television network, and yeah. so that same with Cowboy Bebop, by the way. Yeah, all those old older. It's crazy that they're. I guess they are older now. They're twenty years. They're almost thirty years old. They're vintage. Um, <laughs> for all those older shows, like I think a lot of it here has to do with the fact that it was released on television and people could watch it at, at a very impressionable age, and so we've lost that. And I, part of that yeah. is just because I don't think anyone, even if they were still like, you know, even if there were still things released like that, people wouldn't care. Everyone wants to watch stuff online now, but there just isn't the same equivalent to like, oh, well, this is the only thing on right now. So I guess I got to watch it. Yeah. People you can watch whatever you want. Yeah. People really like need that instant gratification of like, oh, it's all on Netflix. All right, let's binge it. Let's get it. Like, I think. The binge culture is just that massive in terms of how much people do enjoy just r going through a show and being done with it and moving on. That that sort of like yeah. savoring process well, of it, like watching just a bit of a show, getting the time to process it, and then till the next like bit of it you watch at your own leisure or whatever. I think it is good in the sense like I feel like streaming has been a net positive for anime, especially anime proliferation and getting more and more people into it. Mm -hmm. um, but I also think we've lost that like ability for all of us to come together week to week and watch, you know, the new episode of, you know, whatever this big seasonal show is because it's so accessible 24 seven and you don't, and you're not like required to go watch an episode at this specific time on this specific channel. It's... Because like the example you gave with Toonami and um, uh, Full Metal Alchemist 03, like if you missed an episode a week because you know you fell asleep or something happened or something came up, you were fucked. It's interesting because like when you talk about that, because back in the height of COVID, you could say, um, I remember 
uh, ReZero Season 2 started airing. And around the time I would uh, venture off to Reddit, r slash anime more and more. <laughs> and it's kind of crazy looking back because it's not necessarily like massive numbers. But you would see every time, every week when a new episode of ReZero Season 2 came out, like people were coming over to talk about that episode. Like they were like, I think consistently got like 10k upvotes and like thousands of comments and again it's very small in the grand scheme of things but i think in the much smaller communities you still have at that time that culture of like oh new episode of Zero drop boom everyone watched it everyone's gonna talk about it maybe people are gonna make videos on it on youtube and they could share it around like it just truncated a bit you know that amount of people who actually do it you guys have both kind of hit on things that are another sort of cause, I think, of this whole phenomenon we've been discussing, which is that in the last five years, really four and change since basically since COVID, yeah. the, the anime community has ballooned in size. Mm-hmm. It Massively. Has absolutely exploded between Definitely. the Demon Slayer in 2019 to Jujutsu Kaisen in 2020, the first season. I think it was 20, or it might have been 21, one of those two years. Like those two shows in and of themselves just feels like it it just thousands of people that weren't watching anime are mm-hmm. now involved in the community. And whether or not they got more involved and watched more shows or they kind of still just watch it as something occasionally. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. know how much of that matters. It just feels like that it the community is no longer as tight knit as it was, where it was like yeah. I mean in some places it was like a couple hundred people. Like you mm-hmm. know everybody. Yeah. And it would yeah. be like, oh, we're all... It's less of a niche thing now. Yeah. It's not we're it's all mainstream. watching this show. It's that, well, there's one show occasionally that everyone's watching, but it's usually one of the big shonen. And We've so, been on yeah. this trajectory for a while, though. It's funny. Like, I, 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 how old is that Gigguk video? It's like, is that even becoming mainstream? It's like 10 years old or something like that. At this point, and, probably. <laughs> I'm in 2014. Yeah, and so yeah. it's it's funny to think about because when Attack on Time first came out, like that was a massive hit, and it blew up, and it's like the community was like like it felt like it was getting massive. And now we look at it, and it's it, it, it's it's crazy how big it there's got. a there's a stretch that ten year stretch where it's I think I would start it with Attack on Titan, probably yeah. got a lot of people into it. And SAO. I, I would think, yeah, SAO and Attack on Titan, because they came out in the same year. 2013, yeah. 2012 yeah. was SAO, I think. It started in 2012. Oh, was it 2012? I I, I, again, I wasn't watching anime at the time, so I, I don't know. Same. <laughs> I'll, um, sure. I'll look it up. Yeah, look look it up. But yeah, I, I so I wanted to talk about that too. But for those two anime in particular, because I feel like, because that was when streaming was first starting to like gain traction, right? As a legitimate way to watch entertainment. And... I feel like that is those two in particular is what really blew up Crunchyroll to be like the premier anime streaming service. Yes. Yeah. That uh, yeah. and then you go on to My Hero. Yeah, yeah. My Hero is big as well. Later, yeah. And then Demon <laughs> Slayer and then and again, these are all the big box, you know, super popular shows. There's other stuff in between there, but in terms of things that yeah. I, that I categorically know brought people into the medium. It's Definitely. like those shows. Yeah. I mean, there, I, there's a lot of people from back then I, I remember talking to. The whole reason they got a Crunchyroll account was to watch Attack on Titan yeah. as it was coming out. Um, so as much as I might shit on Attack on Titan, I give it a lot of credit for being an anime that brought a lot of people into this space. It's also interesting, like, because you mentioned in like that 10-year stretch, it kind of like starts. So like, yeah, SAO did air at the end of 2012 and then attack on time also like aired at the beginning of 2013 or something like that but that 10 year stretch like getting sort of like bookended with attack on titan in 2013 and then the final season in and 20, then attack on titan in 2023 it, it's it's kind of crazy to think about but even yeah. then like when when yeah. the final season aired i i know i it, it did feel big like watching it weekly like that that that's like maybe not as big as the first season definitely not as big no that's the last that would i i wouldn't i don't know if it was as big as the first season because that was such a phenomenon but i will say the last thing i remember feeling like wow this is like an event was the final was them the final season definitely that was the only show in partially because i was anime only in years where like (laughs) 
it, a new episode would drop and I'd be like, okay, I can't, well, I can't check Twitter. I can't do, I, I like, until I watch it, until I watch it today, I can't, I can't go any on any social media. And then constantly, then, and then you'd watch it and you'd go on social media and you'd see everyone would be, post, <laughs> everybody would be posting about it. Everyone would be it's, posting. It was crazy. Stuff. Everyone would be like one of the it. top trending things on Twitter every week. Yeah. Like that, that was such a weird felt phenomenon like a because season three wasn't like that. Mm -hmm. I have an old video about this, which is bad and no one should watch it, but it is about this, <laughs> about how season one was this huge, in, uh, this huge like breakthrough for anime or over here at the very least. And then season two took such a long time and everybody was kind of like, huh? I, I mean, I liked it, but I know a lot of people that were kind of like, I that wasn't season really two. Cool. Oh, I hate it's it. It's a great season uh, in the full context one. of the show. When you wait no. four years for it and it's the only thing you get, it's okay. I mean, we don't need to talk it's, about it's, it. It's, it's that little trickle. It's that little trickle. <laughs> and then season three came out, and season three is my favorite season, probably, mm. of the show. Mine too. And no, and like, not no one was talking about it, but it wasn't the same. It was, it was nowhere near the same level. Like, it was being yeah. overshadowed by like My Hero at the time and stuff like that. Yeah, and then, definitely. And then it felt like everybody decided, oh, the final season, I'm going to catch. I feel like everybody who had not watched the last it's season time to caught catch up. up. And yeah. everybody was yeah. there for the last season. I feel like in Attack on Titan's case, part of what hurt it a little bit was probably how the final season was released. Yeah, I mean, that was a whole like, kerfuffle. Yeah. Because let, let's be honest, there's a lot of people who watch Attack on Titan who are more casual anime fans. They're not mm -hmm. deep in the trenches. It's like they watch Attack on Titan because they like Attack on Titan, not yeah. necessarily because they like anime um, or they're big anime fans. And I feel like if you weren't in the trenches and you didn't know how that was being released, you'd be really confused. Oh, I had, I had an old boss at a job who had watched Attack on Titan the first season on Netflix. This is yeah. 2019. And he just didn't know that there was a second season because Netflix <laughs> didn't have the second season. The second season had been out for two years at that point. That's crazy. But he just had no yeah. idea because he watched That's the first season on Netflix and that was always on Netflix. That was it. I was like, okay. That's also I a mean, bit of like the <laughs> frustrating part with like the streaming services. The the whole licensing, licensing. part of it is just it feels like yeah. it just makes it the viewing Bro, experience nothing, that much nothing. more. Nothing is as bad as teasing Master Takagi-san because the first season is on Crunchyroll. There you go. The second season is on Netflix. The third season is on High Dive exclusively on all those platforms. Well, there you go. It's like it's making it harder on your audience to consume your shows. And now I get it that it does yeah. like... I don't blame necessarily the the anime producers, like the people who are on the production committees for taking these deals. Like when you were yeah. talking about if like and streaming services are net positive or not. Like one of the things that I do think is good is like how it's another way to like secure funding for shows, especially especially yeah. shows that incredible. I can't. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Speaking That's of cute. licensing issues, sorry. I I, I, yeah. I really wanted to find that on my bookshelf. So Continue, like sorry. like. I like literally like Devil May Cry Baby. I have no idea if it would have been made without like Netflix being there for like, oh, let's secure this show to like being created. But speaking of licensing issues, oh my God. <laughs> exactly. It's like, how can you expect people to like keep up with your shows when it's such a massive headache to figure out which season is where? And uh, it's so yeah. frustrating. I will say, I, I just think physical media, man. <laughs> At the very least, what has survived up to this point, but it has become a little more tenu tenuous the last few years, is the backlog shows, like mm. the classics. Mm. The the classics yeah. are still a thing that exists. It's still, it's still like, you know, you need to watch this show. You need to watch this show. And we have gotten a few that I feel like have stuck around. That's that's always been my biggest complaint with the seasonal model is that it feels yeah. like so many shows come out and, and then they're gone, and then quickly. no one ever talked. Nobody talks about them ever again. Definitely. Yeah. And so at the very least, I, I do often see people watching older backlog shows and talking about them. And that's nice. I think that's, there's like a space it's, for that it's on fun. YouTube to like for people to be like, yeah. for someone to be like zoom in on this one show from this one season that no one talked about. Like, I think there is space for that. It just, I, I agree with you. It's kind of, it, it rubs in the wrong way where people are like so quick to like move on to the next batch of like shows that 
probably no one will really remember in like a few years. I love though watching people uh watch like older anime like classic anime for the first time and them going through it and they're being like the the excitement that they feel watching it is like the exact same you felt the first time you watched it like I'll give you a good example recently i watched death parade for the very first time and i got Fantastic to talk to show. natai about it and he was so excited that he could finally talk to me about it it's such a good show because it, it's you know it's going it back to that like 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 that, that section of any two the recommendation, the reviews, like because people yeah. like it when people discover shows they already like, and it's really cool to see people get excited about shows that you like. You know, it's like I think that would never go you, away, you, just you, not be as big as it used to be. Ian just said it. That part of any tube is dead. It really is. Yeah, yeah nobody not, does yeah. it for recommendations. Well, so it's so it is and it's not. Yeah, it is for. You anime, need to disguise your for... recommendation as like well, a different it's not video, for right? Manga. Mm. No, it's not for manga. No, for manga, it's it, the last few years. It's become it's almost saturated now. But for that, for a couple of years post COVID, it was very much like the video was you would recommend like five manga, the, these five manga you should read or whatever, and that would be the yeah. video. And those always did really well. Which goes back to your you point know, about how also... like the audience like got m m massive, so it's more people like I yeah. need to go and read the source material. I think it's also considering what we do talking about anime online i feel like it's also become more difficult to talk about certain things because people are so obsessed with spoilers it's like when we do an episode yeah. of the podcast especially if we're talking about seasonal stuff and like I, I do my best and we we do like we make a concerted effort to try our best not to include spoilers and stuff but sometimes it's difficult to recommend stuff to people without spoiling at least something from the beginning yep that yeah. is, I'm one of those people because I like going in the, for stuff blind completely. Same. But also sometimes you you need to get people to watch it or else they're not going to watch it. Yeah. Counterpoint. It's why though. we do the spoiler cast. It's like we, we feel like we want to talk about these things, but we don't have to like tiptoe around spoilers. Counterpoint, though. I think there is a way to go about it. Like, again, I'm also like, like sensitive to spoilers, like I admit. But I think there is a way to still get to pique people's interest in shows without getting too much into like the nitty-gritty of like what the show is actually about like yeah. for instance there's this one show this season currently that's airing uh, i don't remember the name shoshini was that the name of it oh it's the hyoka it's the, the hyoka Hi authors show and yeah. there you go like you're like oh this show is based on like this like is written by the guy who wrote hyoka bam like a lot of people will be like i'm, I'm gonna check that out like i think there's still a way to like get people to give a show a chance with the right yeah. approach to how you like I, literally i think it was we were talking about uh with chinoda and uh, i think we were chinoda <laughs> and john were talking and it's like oh yeah there's this show undead unlock and i've been watching and he like he didn't really sell it that well and i'm like oh yeah it's made by david production and it's directed by this guy and john's like bro you should lead with that it's it's <laughs> really... <laughs> it depends on chinoda depends does on this, the person chinoda though, does right? this yeah. all the time too like he 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 sell, he tries to sell stuff and he'll do like all the stuff on the outside like like service level stuff and he won't mention like oh the the soundtrack is done by hiroyuki sawano or you know it's directed by this guy who made like five phenomenal anime that's the easiest way to like sell people on stuff it's like oh it's it's made by this guy it's connected to that show that people really like oh <laughs> I think there's I've a way to go about it. Somewhat disappointingly, that oftentimes we're the um, exception here, not the rule. Mm. A lot of people will will be shown a clip from a show. If that's whether that's episode one or it's like episode ten, mm -hmm. and they're like, "Oh, that looks cool. What show is this?" And then they'll watch the show. Whether or not yeah, they I guess you're a right. major fight or a major twit, that's oh, this looks cool, and then they'll watch it. And it's just, I like, guess okay. you're right. Which is that's one of the yeah, reasons why. They wouldn't post clips like that online if the like official channels wouldn't do that unless it worked. I mean, I guess that's why like one of the reasons Demon Slayer took off that like to that extent because of so many it was shared everywhere. No one remembers. Yeah. No one remembers. No one talked about that. Okay. No, a season no one, and but... a, like a full core and a half of Demon Slayer like came out and it was like, oh, this is fine. This is like it's a good shown in. This is fun. This is well animated. This, this looks like, good. Oh, this this is sounds like a, good. Pretty good show. Like it, it has it has the the fundamentals down. It was not the most popular thing ever when it no. first came out. And then that episode dropped. And then the last five episodes of the, of the season were like appointment viewing for everybody. It was like, oh my God. Definitely. Bro, episode, definitely. 19 episode 19 of Demon was Slayer everywhere. is still to this day 
one of my most favorite anime episodes ever. It's really good, but it's yeah. also like people remember that and not the fact that the the whole first half of the show was like airing and people were no like one talked Luke, about it lukewarm warm yeah. but not like there was no indication it was going to be the most popular media property of like two years well and no one knew that in what was it was it 2020 when mugen train came out like it was going to be the highest grossing movie of the year that year granted there's a massive asterisk on that but I think it's still it's top it's still five one of the most profitable. Yeah, it's still, bro. Movie the new trilogy is gonna make so much money. Is... Yeah, um, I forgot where we were going with this. <laughs> it, yeah, it <laughs> is the Demon it's Slayer. the highest grossing Japanese film of all time. That's crazy. Yeah. Half a billion dollars, and it's that is and it's insane. still I think the highest grossing uh, film of 2020 worldwide. That's so crazy. It's like it made more money than Spirited Away. <laughs> yeah. My God, that that was a huge thing when it came out too, man. I remember in the height of COVID, I went to go watch this in theaters. There were like maybe a few dozen theaters that were still open playing movies in the whole country. I went to one. That thing was full. That whole theater was full of people. In the height of COVID, granted, we were all wearing masks, but and they wouldn't sell us popcorn. <laughs> like, is that? Is that now? I feel like as we've been recording, I've been thinking of new reasons why water cooler anime might not exist anymore. And is is like movies? A, is movie is is are movies a reason? Um, there have been more anime movies coming out outside of Japan recently, but also they've been doing sequel movies, right? Like in in, yeah. the, in the olden days, Mugen Train would have been an arc in the anime, and it would have been like eight episodes of yeah, the show, true. kind of like how they did it in season two. Yeah, but then would that have been? I almost think that would have been less appealing than the movie was because it was you go in and it's it's that's it it's an event and you're yeah. done you're in and out because that's how movies movies are supposed to be that way they're supposed to be an event especially it, for like an action oriented thing like Demon Slayer. Here's a thought though, like you, so you talked about like the event feel, but like yeah, your name was like an event. Especially in the states where you're yeah. in theaters, it's kind of funny maybe to call it like water cooler. But would you say it's on? It was when it released on that scale of like everyone in the community watched it. Was. it everyone, yeah, it was massive. Everyone but that was had also like a, in 2017. That's right. When yeah. when shows would would do that, I'm trying to think of a recent movie that did that that wasn't a sequel mm. movie. Because even like, like Weathering um, with You didn't really do that. I mean, like here's the thing: like Weathering with You and Susan May, like Susan everyone May. went and watched it, but it didn't have that same magic. That that same, I feel like. like I don't well, know. I feel like with with the the Makoto Shinkai movies that you're talking about, like especially with Your Name, Your Name felt like an event because it was kind of novel. Like it was the first time I can remember a big anime movie, maybe besides Spirited Away, but that also had the Disney stuff. But I, I, that had Disney money. There's also like a 15 year and, difference, or even maybe um, even 20 year difference yeah. between the two. I don't know. Ghibli movies are like their own animal entirely. Yeah. Um. Agreed. But um, with your name, it felt like the first time I thought like, wow, anime is having like a long running stand in an American movie theater. This feels like anime has made it. Mm -hmm. yeah, Whereas with with Weathering with You and Susume, like it didn't feel as big because it wasn't new. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel about it too. I think it, I, I think that's yeah. that's part of it. I don't know. What? There's so like, many. There's I still so have many... a hard time believing that the the Kizumonogatari movies ever got released in the U.S. Too. That's crazy. Yeah, that was also around the same time. We just get everything now. It's kind of it's kind of well, for a while. It was. It was like the fa the fandom fan the fandango no fathom sorry it was the fathom events yeah you would, like I saw the Sao movie in theaters in 2017 but it was like a fat one night event mm. yeah so there's no previews it was just like basically like some theaters would have it and some wouldn't and that's what happened yeah. with the fate the fate heavens feel movies and mm. my theater didn't get it so I, I still haven't seen those films which is now my fault not the theater's fault but i never saw it when it came <laughs> out because it was wasn't being shown near me and now all of them get full theater, theater runs yeah and not just a day or like a two-day thing like sometimes you'll get like a day for the sub and a day for the dub um like they're in theaters for weeks 
Yeah, what was the most recent one that I? I mean, the high key, the high key one. It was no, it's by family. So yes, oh, Spy, yeah, Spy yeah. Family one was the one that I did. I just Spy had like family. a normal release. In Spy Family theaters. felt yeah, like it, really it came and went, right? Like I, d- I didn't it, see a lot of chatter about it. It did. I mean, it was. Now we're we're so off topic now, but it was. Um, <laughs> I know how we are. <laughs> it was I'm being a bad host. You know, a fun original movie had yeah, a fun little was, plot. It was fine. But in terms of like, I do, I, I do, I, I do think that movies might have a little bit to do with this um, sort of move away from like the water cooler aspect too. It's like, like you said, with the Demon Slayer thing, Mugen Train back in the day would have just been an arc in like a second season. Well, not even it would have been. It would have just been a Part forty-five like a long episode season. show, which would have just been. Yeah, the, would have just been in the middle of the show. But yeah, actually, I, no, no. If it, if it was like fifteen, twenty years ago, if Demon Slayer came out, it would have had two seasons, and it would have ended like at the very end of like the second or third arc, and the and it would have just been a go read the source material ending. That's what it would have <laughs> been. It's that's something else that we got. We've gotten recently is this is more of a recent phenomenon. Full adaptations of source material. Yeah, God bless. And announced full adaptations of source material. Like mm-hmm. you go into it saying, okay, we're adapting this, you know, whatever this forty volume run manga, and then we're not going to do two seasons and then not finish it. We're going to do the whole thing. Yeah, and see that is part of the problem to me. I think. Having that, we've kind of talked around this. We've talked about it. I'm trying to like do the math in my head. I think my two, my two biggest causes causes of death for <laughs> water cooler anime, anime death is um, more shows and a splintered community mm-hmm. and yeah. source source reading. Because to me, at least the people Damn I know, you. to me, and for the people, a lot of people I know, the water cooler portion the talking every week about a, a story with people has just become yeah. manga it is just moved yeah out. it is moved to to manga not even light yeah. novels because i'm not really as in that scene so i'm not sure i don't even know how oh, the I weekly mean, release of manga chapters yeah, the for weekly most release shows yeah of new yeah. you know like every new jjk chapter is an event on my timeline everybody's talking about it the Chainsaw Man ones too, mm-hmm. to, to yeah. a somewhat lesser extent. Now you 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 brought it up. Do you think that the next frontier to to use the, the phrase um, is going to be light novels? Because now, like people go to the source, they go to the manga. Do you people think it's going like to become light novels now? <laughs> so if I could be perfectly Are light novels going to be the reason that we don't have fucking cohesive community? Can I be perfectly honest? I don't mm. because it's you have to read. Yeah. People don't I know you have to read you. manga, but like the a, a, you don't a have to read the, as much. A lot of the people I see talking about this shit on on Twitter, in my mind, are just looking at the pictures. <laughs> and going like this, it, look but... at it this way. Look at it this way. You won't see like people like losing their minds, screenshotting a paragraph from a light novel, like they would a massive panel with like, look at this. I, you know, it's for a. To answer your question a little more seriously, I I'm not really certain. I would say I would lean towards no because they don't release weekly or monthly, right? Yeah, it's yeah. it's a release that you know I think it for even some of the more prolific writers you'll maybe get four a year, maybe depends yeah, on yeah like Amicio Eason or a, yeah like uh, maybe one every couple of months if they're really mm-hmm. like yeah. feeling it, but a lot of times you'll get one or two a year. And that's fine. That's hell. The, even um, here he go Rocky who does JoJo. It's like he just releases a new chapter when he feels like it's done. It's not necessarily monthly. It's just whenever I'm done. And yeah. I just think part of the reason why we talked about the accessibility that's obviously helped, but it's the cadence because that was what mm. always did it for the anime. Was it was weekly? Yeah. We've talked about how yeah. the binge model doesn't lend itself to these discussions as much mm-hmm. because you just get to the end of the series. You don't have to sit there and think what's going to happen. What do, what do I think is going to happen? Yep. I feel like that's also something that made the big three in the early 2000s, well, actually through the 2000s, so accessible too. Because number one, it was, and they were putting out new episodes every week and there were no seasonal gaps. It's like <laughs> every week, there may be, there may be like a, a week or two gap here and there because of a major holiday or some major event that's being covered, whatever. But it was it was every week you were getting a new episode and 
it had this sort of model with its storytelling where if you even if you came in in the middle of an arc, when you get to the end of that arc, you're going to get to a new arc where there's a brand new story being told. Let's be honest, though. I think that's let's be. I think honest, it's a though. big part of the reason why the big three got so big in the 2000s. I think it's. I think we're we're pretty okay and happy with the fact that we're not in the, those days of like anime adaptations being the way they were with like Bleach and now like only One Piece is I, the last remaining like we, big show. Yeah, well, that works except like for that. a couple of like legacy shows like Doraemon and yeah, yeah but like you Shin know, Chan, they're not really countries. being like part like talked yeah. about in the anime community. I think it's for the yeah. best that we studios stayed away from that model. Now that they're like, oh, we can work on this like, I feel season like the, one of the things it. that's I feel like one of the things that's really really helped something like MHA stay relevant is because they release like seasons they don't release week to week mm -hmm. yeah that's a bit of a tricky one for me because again it comes back to the fact that I just think everyone that cared has read it like after yeah. the second or third season, anyone that cared just went, I'm just going to catch up with the manga. I'm anime only, and I'm proud of it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's fair, but I just feel like the majority of Majority people, moved on, definitely. Like all, yeah. like this is the big point I made in that video that you referenced earlier in the tie of like, it just, we reached the point where all of the people who care enough to drive these discussions and to be the people parading the series around, to be the people who are on the forefront of the community, making content, making videos about it, making discussions are now just reading the manga because they care enough yep. about the story that they want to know what's going to happen. Yep. And so we've yep. just lost, we've lost that. And we haven't had a good original in a couple of years. Do you think, do you think it's because of people's attention spans? Like they want that instant gratification. Yeah. It's, I, I mean, exactly like that. I, sure. But not like in like, I don't think it's like a, like a, like a just culture discourse war type of way. I mean, it might oh, just no. be that be, I, I just think it's because it's there. Mm -hmm. And you love the yeah. story so much. Why wouldn't you just read it? Yep. Right. Like yeah. I just think that's the that's the mind the mindset. I mean, if, yeah. If you really want to see what happens next, and the anime hasn't gotten there, yeah. Why wouldn't you go do it if it's accessible and you can get it? Because I find uh, that a lot of the for the bigger the bigger shonen, the first season you can usually get away with being anime only, mm -hmm. and being Definitely. like, oh yeah, and everyone's kind of experiencing it. Not as much lately. I think JJK kind of was the last one I was like that for, but like where it was like a lot of people were ex discovering the series for the first time. Now everyone, at least in my sphere, has just mined Shonen Jump to such a degree <laughs> that like the second a new series drops, all these people are reading it and being like, oh, "You got to read this one. Uh, Don't read this I one." No. And no. so yeah, like, I am never. I personally, I think this is a personal problem. Never going to be surprised by a Shonen Jump anime ever again mm. because I've already heard going to have heard so much about the series. I mean, the same you could say the same for Spy X Family too. So that's a Shonen uh, Jump series. Yeah, it's... and that was when it came out. It was I had hear I had heard a little bit about it, but not mm -hmm. yeah, so much. But now anything, anything in that vein, I don't know. I would. I just thought about something. Because you were talking about like the, the whole water cooler effect thing, I, I can think of something from last year that had that effect, but it was for a single episode. Oshinoko's first episode. That was an event. That was a water yeah. cooler moment because the second it dropped and people were started talking about, oh my god, the twist, my I never saw. It. I was like, okay. Do you think it yeah, bled we out? We were all though, talking about it. Actually, it probably did like bleed out of the anime community because it was massive like that song was everywhere as well like mm. <laughs> yo Sobi, that that song god it's still it gets in it, my head too it was certainly one of the more popular shows last year mm -hmm. but it just doesn't have I, I, I don't think it I'm, did reach that I'm, like massive I audience. think I'm thinking of a very specific like type of show because Definitely. there are still popular shows right and to yeah. some of my... There's popular shows airing right now. To some of my point earlier, a lot of the second season of Oshinoko is when people telling me how much this is their favorite arc in the manga. Instead of I've people been hearing that like, all oh, the time. Um, but I think in my mind, when I'm, I'm thinking about a show where every week people are discussing it mm. and like, like Darling and the Franks, people I know are having legitimate 
fights <laughs> over things that were happening in the show and stuff yeah. like that, right? And like that just doesn't happen anymore. That's kind of the whole point. I, of the one the thing awesome. I remember about Darling and the Franks that, that I thought was wild is that people were dry, like dragging that into the culture war because of the gender dynamics in that show. Everything about that show, the, all the discourse about that show, honestly, would be ten times worse now. But was so oh my god, so crazy. But can you imagine Andrew Tate getting a hold of this it this would be, anime? It would Jesus be the Christ! Worst. I, I'm so glad. It I'm I'm honestly glad it it had a bad ending and, and disappeared because it would just be insufferable <laughs> nowadays. Yeah. Before they're remaking it with a new ending in like five I think years. about that sometimes. Oh God! I think about that sometimes with uh, with older anime, like especially if they were to get remade now. It's like, oh my God, the discourse around this would be so terrible. I thought I thought that was going to happen with Urusei Yatsura's remake. Thankfully, it didn't. Because to be fair, I've watched both the original and the remake. I love it. I love both. Dave Production did a phenomenal job with it, by the way, um, with the remake, and they didn't change much of the writing at all. And so the jokes seem right out of the 1970s. Uh, gender stereotypes and all. <laughs> it's fine. I just think what happens is everything moves so fast nowadays that mm -hmm. um, like, the, like a show like that will come out and maybe some mm -hmm. people will try to jump on a bandwagon to get make comments about it on Twitter. But then they move yeah. on. To the, then they'll just move on. They move on to the next, to the next thing, seasonal right? shit. That's like yeah. the 24 hour like and, social media cycle. Yeah, you got to move on to your next outrage. Yeah, but just like you said, we said many times in this episode, like with the seasonal model, just like people are like watching some shows and they're done, moving to the next season, like forgetting all yeah. these shows that just came out. It's... And it's so like when when there's 30, 40, 50 shows coming out, like you have to because you can't sit there and you know, dwell on like all the other shows that you missed because or you've got you other just, stuff to watch now or you just don't play that game and you don't bother with keeping up with seasonal shows and it's five years later and you still haven't watched something we told you to watch <laughs> don't know what you're talking about uh-huh <laughs> yeah i mean that's like the tie that's probably the best way to go about it in terms of personal enjoyment but then you're going to miss out on the conversations the discussions. definitely yeah so it's kind of like I've yeah. gotten that way though. Like when we when we started doing the podcast, and especially like from 2016 through 2019, 2020, I had this mentality of like, okay, I'm on a podcast. My job is to talk about anime, and we talk a lot about currently airing stuff. It's incumbent upon me to watch as much currently airing stuff as I as I can to talk about this stuff. Mm -hmm. So I was regularly watching 20 to 25 series a season. It's exhausting. And keeping up though. with them week to week. It's fucking exhausting. And that's not even one third of the shows that come out. Yeah, every exactly. Season, right? Yeah. Especially now. And so many good shows get lost in the shuffle. Like, like how many people who are currently watching shows even like even know about Sunny Boy? And that show isn't even that mm. old. So that's a yeah. weird that's a weird one, right? Not to get on my soapbox. Because that do it is a show that is so <laughs> ob like almost obtuse mm -hmm. in the way that that show just will never be popular. Even if we still lived in an anime community where everybody Definitely. watched everything and talked about it, that that would be the show that would have people because it already does have people that were like, "Oh, well, this isn't. I, I don't like this. It's not good." Yeah, because unless you trying to figure out how to say this not in a not like a snobby way but unless you like engage with what it's trying to say to you you like, won't take the time to try and understand what it's doing you're not going to enjoy it mm -hmm. and so that that show is a little bit of a wish we had more shows like that though I chose some yeah <laughs> i mean i cue me talking for like the billionth time on this podcast about ping pong the animation and how nobody's fucking watched it but it's amazing uh, that one i think has that like status like show like must watch shows it's really good but i've never come across anyone else that's watched it i'm trying to think <laughs> I, I do think i blow this out of proportion a little bit because still this year we had we had delicious in dungeon we had yep. freer in which which credit to netflix for airing that week to week and that really Definitely. helped you could you could see I, I literally because I was in from and, the start. You could and see they marketed it. 
They yeah. actually fucking marketed it. Mm-hmm. Hopefully I was seeing I was seeing ads on YouTube for it. I'm like, <laughs> finally, that's one of my biggest fears when something gets picked up by Netflix. It's like, great, it'll be available to me, but no one's gonna watch it because you're not gonna tell anyone you fucking have it on your platform. They're better about it now. Hulu is the worst at the moment. Hulu and Disney uh-huh. Plus, yeah, has... Disney Plus are garbage like, un- marketing. Un- un- was was pretty good. Uh, I'm not. Gonna, I mean, not hell, gonna Disney talk about Plus it picked length, up. But... Um, well, Disney Plus picked up uh, summertime rendering and then sat on it well, for a year worst. and a they, half. They didn't release it. That was the Undead Unluck was coming out weekly mm-hmm. with with yeah. the cadence, but the un, the summertime rendering one is one of the worst. That and examples of that. That and to a lesser extent because they released it. Um, oh my god, what's that other show? Why I watched that? Why can I not remember? It's like a mystery show um, on well, Disney like, Plus. It had some like last year. It had some. Contention for anime of the year. Mystery. Uh, it's bad that I can't remember. This is proving my point, I guess. Uh, <laughs> it was Heavenly uh, Delusion. Plus? Heavenly, Heavenly Delusion. Delusion. Heavenly Delusion. Wow. It's on I, I, oh, man. I actually enjoyed that. Yeah. And like that was a, one of the better shows last year that like, just kind of got buried because he was on a different streaming service. It's still incredible to me that they don't give it the English translation as like the title for the show on Disney Plus. Oh yeah, sometimes they that, don't. That, sometimes it's that's, just that's the incredible. Japanese. Like, come on, yeah, it's like Ten- Tengoku Daimo, I believe. Yeah, it's like. Ah. The... Can I just can I just say both of those ones we talked about for Disney Plus, both Heavenly Delusion and Summertime Rendering, great anime. You should go watch if you haven't. Yeah, and they just got buried. It just, yep. it just sucks. Yep. Heavenly, uh, well, Summertime Rendering was the worst because they sat on it for a year. And that was the one half I've, before they put it on the platform. I've been having, with the exception of JoJo's, which is a more personal thing, I haven't been that angry about a release in quite a while of just like not putting it out. Bro, like, JoJo just, just, yeah, just hurt. Reason. That was just a knife to the heart, man. See, for me, I didn't care so much <laughs> because I love JoJo's. But if they're going to fuck up a release for a season or for a part, I'm okay with this one because uh, part six is my the, least favorite part of JoJo's. Enough of the part six slander. It deserves so much more. <laughs> God, I love that shit. Listen, I'm just saying. I don't like how it my is. My girl Jolene this. deserved better, and you know it. So do you guys ever think this will come back? Like the idea of a water cooler show? Or are we just kind of... Is the community too big? Because I'm trying to, I'm trying to compare it to the video because the video game community has e- exploded to one of the biggest communities online Definitely. in the last twenty years. Oh and, yeah, and but they they still have their these, Elden t- these games. They still have the games where everybody's playing it. Yep. I guess it's yeah. to a lesser extent not everybody was playing. I mean, so maybe well, that's the future. I- I feel like with video games, like you have the the release date, right? When the game comes out, and obviously when it when a highly anticipated game comes out, people are going to be hell. If it's a like a triple A game, some people will take time off work to play it. Right. Um, it'll come out, they'll play it, they'll talk about it, whether it's good or bad. Um, more often than not, it's bad because games get released as buggy fucking messes these days. Um, but. And then it happens, and then after a while, it, it, it dies down. But there right. are still games that come out or have came out a long time ago that people still talk about. People still talk about and play Skyrim all the time. But in my mind now, I've realized it's a one-time thing. It's a one-day event mm-hmm. or a one-week or two-week yeah. event. It's not mm-hmm. this like weekly continuous that I'm unless unless they have highly like high-profile DLCs that come out like uh, uh, Elden Ring. But even then, it's just. It's like that took like two years. It's though. like if you released the full season on Netflix of a show and everyone talked about it. It's like yeah. like Arcane, yeah. and the second season of Arcane is going to come out next year, and it'll be like people are going to talk about it. But it's but it doesn't it doesn't have that like staying weekly power. cadence. That weekly cadence. That's kind of what I think, I'm discussing. I think it'll just be a matter of the right show at the right time that you, we will experience that once again, like in the anime community. I don't think it's like a dead concept. It's um, not, like but literally it has to be an original. Uh, mm, it has to be an original. Yeah. I, I think I think it, I think if it's gonna happen again, it has to be an anime original. Has to be made by a high profile studio, and it has to be on a platform that's going to market it, like how um, uh, Crunchyroll marketed Kaiju Number no. Eight. That was crazy. They yeah, really, they yeah, did yeah, put really a lot of money on that. But I, the I problem don't even with think an anime original I, is it's untested. I don't because think there's no built in audience for you it. You say that. That's why but... they're not making as many. 
you say that, but like Demon Slayer, like the manga was big, but it the anime got it to explode in popularity. Yeah. yeah, and I don't. That's why I don't think it necessarily has to be an anime original. I, it it could be just like another Shonen Jump adaptation that like needs that like moment to like explode, just like with episode nineteen. How we like because that was everywhere. You couldn't escape it. Um, I think right, it's I. I'm just convinced it's going to be an anime original if it happens again. I am too because of that. What we discussed earlier, where I just feel like, for me, right? Mm-hmm. I feel like part of this is the fact that I am extremely plugged in all this stuff. Mm-hmm. But yeah. um, I just can't imagine a big, at least for Shonen. I think it could happen with some other series, but also Shonen's yeah. always the most popular show. So it's a weird like double edged sword. I, just, I think there are some genres that'll never happen with. I don't think it'll ever happen with like a rom com. Mm. Quintessential it's quintuplets was like, pretty big. I was discussing quintuplets with people weekly, but that's also <laughs> maybe. I don't know. That was pretty. Uh, it I, wasn't I still will massive, never forget what big. they did to my girls. Uh, they made like... them not thick, and I can't. I can't. <laughs> I thought you were complaining about season... something else. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Alex the, is the, very the first season, the character designs were so much better. <laughs> Alex is very specific. <laughs> um, I think it could be I done. wanted him with thick fucking thighs, my dude. But what I was saying, sorry, was that um, I just can't imagine a, a a new adaptation coming out and it not just having all of these people who either have read it or immediately mm-hmm. go out and read it. That's true. Would, so I can like, think of one exception to that. And it have to, this is a this is like a, a hypothetical thing. It has to be something that's done in the same way that Stanley Kubrick did 2001: A Space Odyssey, where you were writing the manga at the same time you were doing the anime. I don't think there's like which a which has happened, of... which happens. But really? I, I do know the yeah. point you're making. It would be. I'm trying to think of like well, brother. That was an original. Alchemist, right. FMA Brotherhood ended about a month after the manga ended. Mm-hmm. That's like the closest I can think of as a show that was like basically running simultaneous. <laughs> there were no, uh, fuck. What was it? Mm. There was one that happened like three or four years ago. It may have even been before COVID in 2019 where the final episode of the anime came out on the same day. The final chapter of the manga released. That's really fun. But I, I have no idea. I can't remember. I remember what we were was. talking about it. it. Which show was it? I, I cannot for the life of me remember what it was. If anyone is watching or listening to this and knows, please let us know because I cannot think of what it was. Let's see if I can find it. But That's that was kind of a crazy thing too when that happened. I was hoping MHA would do that, but they're a little further behind. Nah. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you know, there's stuff to talk about with that ending as well. <laughs> Cease. I will not say Shut anything. Up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I will not hear another word coming out of your well, mouth at least about you'll, that. You'll probably get to see the ending next year? Soon. And another season? Yeah, probably. Yeah. At most. At most, one more. That's it. No, no. Next season is probably going to be the last. Unless they'll be like, whoa, half a season in a movie. Oh, we changed <laughs> the ending for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Fuka. Um, wow <laughs> you you know i was I, when we started recording i'm like god i have to talk about fuka because those days were incredible that's oh, the thing man. though right like back then that was our water we cooler people, anime we were all talking about fuka like if fuka came out today no one would give even no, with the, no one would give a shit the stupid idiot such no a would care. stupid anime <laughs> we had like like dozens of people all like together being like oh i wonder what's gonna happen in the next episode of fuka I still have screenshots from that garbage anime. Holy shit! <laughs> I, I don't want to just. I don't want to. I don't want to talk about it. I we mean, should. We should bring it up sometime. This is also pretty big when it came out. Yeah, and Boy, that's, was, rock. that's a good example of that was a, like no one expected it to. What I like yeah, to th- call this came out of nowhere, and no one expected it to get as big as it did. I like to call that a functional original, because <laughs> it's not an original. <laughs> But nobody had read the four coma. Yeah. Very few mm-hmm. people had read the four coma before it released. Yeah. I don't even think it was was it I don't think it was super popular in Japan either. That I, I can't speak to that. I have no idea. It, it, like it reminded me or the of anime. What shows used to do some shows the used manga. to do where 
the the manga wouldn't even get licensed here until the anime had already been successful. That's true. Versus yeah. now, most things will get like a good majority of popular we'll things will already be licensed. That is true. But yeah. but it was just like I had never seen the manga anywhere. I'd never heard about it. To me, I think I got a couple episodes in before anyone ever even told me, "Oh, this isn't an original. Like this is based off of something." <laughs> it's just that they've it, they've completely changed it and like made it into this full length episode instead of the uh, the four coma. And also nerfed Bochi's chest. Ugh. My man. <laughs> he has no limits. I'm just saying. He's complaining just... about this shit. <laughs> Look, character design is a very important aspect of anime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not uh, wrong. I'm not going to argue with you uh, on that point. <laughs> yeah, I, I do think, like, at least what I want to close it on is that while we've been pretty, I've been pretty negative at least. I do think the community has changed mm. for the better and for the worse. I think it's good that it's more mainstream. I think it's good that it's easier to read manga and watch. Not as much gatekeeping as it shows. Used to yeah, be. It, it it feels like it's gotten um, a lot more open, but mm -hmm. it also we mm -hmm. also have you, when that happens, you lose some things. Definitely, you lose a cl uh, more tight knit community. You lose those to these seasonal shows that everyone everyone would be watching because there's just more everyone is now more people yeah yeah definitely. and so there's just more people and they're gonna have different tastes and they're all gonna want to watch different stuff and there's so much stuff coming out every season it's crazy i, I just i wonder that to me is that to me is the biggest change because when i started watching anime in the late 90s early 2000s you were lucky if you got 12 new anime a season i mean even 15 years ago it was Enough you could watch everything. Yeah, you yeah. could keep up. Functionally. It was manageable. I yeah. just wonder... Like, I think that's a problem. I think it's going to become... It's becoming more and more of a problem for anime studios as well. Keeping yeah, up. so that's I mean, just look other... at what's going on with MAPPA. Yeah. MAPPA's got like, what? 12, 13 anime in the pipeline? What was They're that... Crazy. Uh, what, what, was, what was that point you were trying to make, Ian? Oh, sorry. I was just saying... I, 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 I just sit here and I wonder, like... Would... Ka like a kaiju number eight 10 years ago would that have been like a huge like i, I share yeah it was a big show but it didn't feel like what mean what what a big show is now feels different right because it was popular definitely it was popular enough mm -hmm. but it wasn't like i don't know maybe i'm just i'm just yearning for a time where there would be a show every season that like was like the, the show you had Everyone to watch and now there's about. and yeah. now there's six different shows yeah. you have to watch every season and when they're all differing levels of quality and let's be honest, yeah. you have now even less time to watch all six shows that everyone's watching. Mm -hmm. Well, and now we're starting to see more and more anime remakes too. Don't turn into Hollywood anime, please. Uh, I'm, please. Uh, point sidebar. I don't. I think it's great. We're getting remakes of and like well produced full adaptations of old shows that it's, were like. It's good. It's good when it's done by people who give a shit about what it came from. Yeah. But not the one. Well, I'm probably gonna watch the One Piece remake, but it just yeah, seemed like a I waste will. Of, it feels like a waste of. No, it's not. It is wild to me the idea we're getting a remake of something while that thing is still airing. Well, it's the question I have is perfect. just like, are they going to? Is it the whole thing? Is it just so, East Blue? Yes. Like, what are we doing? They, so they they uh, stated that this, like, at least for now, it's gonna cover the East Blue, like the first major saga. I'm. Pretty certain it'll mean they'll cover the rest as well. It just for now they're just gonna focus on the first you know saga. Who should get this treatment is Naruto. Man, I, I so. wish I would yeah. love to get into Naruto. Well, there, there was a, what was so it like bloated. two years ago? There was a there was a dude who like edited Naruto to not include all the yeah, filler. all the filler. Yeah. Um. Yeah. The like. It's not even the the issue I have with remaking Naruto though is that I like the older art style more than the more modern art style, mm, and so yeah. I honestly, if it's going you to look it like to be that, shiny. yeah, if it's going to look like that really shiny style they have for a lot of Boruto stuff, I'm God. not I'm not sure I actually like want the to do shiny it. like extra like lens I, flare she'd have in the new Bleach I, anime. I I keep watching Boruto. You do. I, I keep to. thinking it's gonna get. I keep thinking I it's to. gonna get I better. I need to just, just, just wow. Rip I'm off shocked, that Alex. At some point. I I keep thinking it's gonna get better, and it doesn't. I can't fix him. 
<laughs> I I can't fix him. <laughs> I just need to, I need a divorce. I really need a divorce from Boruto. <laughs> but yeah, I it is it's it's odd because as long as I've been watching anime, I I kind of yearn for those days too, where it felt like it was a more close knit community and you could just talk each week about you know the new episode of whatever everybody's watching that season or that year. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. It, I'm glad that we still have the the shows that come out every so often where it feels like a lot of people are watching it, just not at the same time. Yeah, like it, Chainsaw it, Man was that way. I have a different view on that show because of the way I think people are really annoying about it. But that's a well, we can the, discuss the, that at another time. I I'd love to get into that conversation with you. It, it, yeah. TLDR, I just think the adaptation is good and fun, and I don't know why people hate it so much. I think it's a very minor vocal, I mean, minor I'm, vocal minority. I'm just saying, we never got around to doing a spoiler cast for the first season, and I sure would like to. <laughs> I can gush about that first season for weeks. Holy shit. I could spend an entire hour and a half just talking about the goddamn EDs. <laughs> I think them. it's a great production that for some reason people really got negative about online and like anti I've never seen a fan base anti hype their good adaptation before. Bro, I, 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 I was shocked when I like for the very short amount of time I was on Twitter and then I realized I'm done with it. <laughs> so uh, they announced the Dan 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 anime adaptation and the trail came out and the first comment was nice it's not gonna be shit like chainsaw this man. is like, what the chainsaw man one should have exactly been. and i'm like it, it, what's wrong with you're, you're what? gonna make me really angry you're gonna make me get really mad on camera this, I'm not gonna the whole that. the whole discussion around chainsaw man is what got me to hate some section of the anime community it's like it's oh. it's like people didn't read the manga and just looked at the covers and were like oh yeah this is definitely what this series is all about is all the bright colors yeah Okay. That's yeah. like looking Sometimes at the Monogatari series and thinking it's about incest. You know, you know, well, you know what they say. This is why we can't have nice things. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Unfortunate. Um, and on that note, yeah, that's. Yeah, on that note, I think that's a good a good spot to end. Um, uh, sad that it's a downer note, but it is well, what it, it is. It I guess sort of a downer topic, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, especially if you've been in the anime like space for a long time like I have, watching it become what it is. It's it's great that we have the accessibility, but that accessibility has come with a price. It's just different, right? I think in it's, terms it's of it's different. I don't think it's necessarily bad, it's just different. No, in terms of popular shows, Oshinoko is pretty popular this season. I think Don Don will be super popular in the fall. Yeah, that'll be as massive. will as will maybe Re Zero. Um, you know. Some people Spice are watching there. Spice and Wolf, the remake, I guess. <laughs> so, some people, everybody should be watching Spice and Wolf to find um, out why Holo is literally the best girl ever. Um. <laughs> but it, I just, I don't see anything in, on the horizon that'll have this same water cooler effect. And that's just simply yeah. because the big shows that I see coming up on, on the docket for the next couple of seasons are all things that have fan bases that already exist. Mm -hmm. I can think of one thing that might, and it it will depend on if it's good. Uzumaki. Uzumaki might explode. We'll see. But even then, right? How many of those people who have already read already read the, the manga? That's true. That and been true. like, oh, this is incredible, but I already know what's going to happen. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you won't have the, the the whole novelty factor of the of the story, but I hope I hope for the sake of of that adaptation that it is good because I love that story so maybe fucking the new much. Dragon Ball anime maybe mm. maybe I just feel how like many, a lot of the how many people kept up with super a lot I yeah. mean that was super super was actually that final fight popular. was yeah that, I'm, yeah I'm talking out of my ass that final fight was everywhere okay so Daimo <laughs> I just feel like Dragon Ball sometimes captures a different part of the community mm-hmm Hmm. That isn't yeah. isn't necessarily the people that the, are like the erased people we were talking we were we've been talking I was, about. I, I was going to say the Latin American part of the community. Well, yes, but <laughs> God bless them. <laughs> it depends. Ooh, um, another one is obviously 
based on a manga, but Sakamoto Days coming out, that might be big. Uh, depends on the adaptation, I think. But again, yeah. though, like I, I, I do want to sc- clarify this before we wrap up, just because in case anyone was confused about what we're talking about, I'm not talking about popular shows. There are still yeah. plenty of shows that are anime that are popular. Oh yeah, it's Absolutely. the fact that they don't have the discussion community around them on a week to week basis that they used to, because and, a, and the staying power. Yes, because people have read the manga is basically my one a and my one b is there's too much coming out people are splintered and the manga and so like with yeah. a don a don a don if everybody was blind on it would probably do numbers weekly be crazy mm-hmm. but when half of your or more than half of your viewer base are people that are like oh yeah you got to read this this i've already read it like oh you guys you're gonna love you're gonna love what comes next like that stuff it just becomes a yeah. little bit of a different. It's hard to talk about it in a public forum because you have people who already know what's going to happen. I can't be like, "Oh, I yeah. wonder what's going to happen next episode," because people already know what's going to happen next episode. That's just. I Do feel like the way we all inter- we all interact with shows has changed in the last decade or so. I have a very quick yeah. sidebar. Do you remember that complaint sometimes on like forums and like discussion where it's like. Oh no, manga readers are disguising themselves as anime only, and they're like, Oh, I wonder if this character will be back in next steps. And it's like they fucking know they have future knowledge. I didn't know that? about that. That's really funny. I, I don't know where I saw that like like people fighting about it. It's like they're coming in and they're like teasing us, but they already know because they're manga readers who are disguising themselves as anime only, and I found that super funny. It just it changed yeah. in the last ten years. It went yeah. from being a manga reader was a, they, they, there aren't many anime onlys left. It just mm-hmm. felt at least online. There's plenty of anime onlys that are casual people that watch it for fun. But I don't or watch anime online. for yeah. fun. I watch it because it's very serious business. That's why. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's your job. <laughs> it just feels it's your like, job to talk about anime online. It feels like more people are now just casual manga readers instead of it being yeah only the hardcore people so everybody just kind of knows what's going on yeah anyway yeah and then you got people like me who only go read the source material after <laughs> can, i finished watching the anime can you imagine can you imagine the second season of jjk if like most people were blind on it it would have been insane it would have been insane. It yeah. crazy it would have been like Oh my god, what's going to happen? Instead of me having to listen to 100 people tell me, "Well, next week this person's going to fight this person." You're not going to believe you know, how crazy you know, that's going to be. And you know why I know it's it's it would have been so insane cuz literally all my IRL group of friends watched it weekly without knowing nothing about the manga. Uh-huh. It was I I'm love so jealous. This. I'm so jealous. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it, it's <laughs> just get off Twitter. Just get off Twitter. It's so much better that way. It's true. Or put the manga down. <laughs> Yeah, everyone else should stop reading manga instead of me stop using Twitter. I think that's the solution to this problem. Yes, Easily. absolutely. Easily. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so that's going to be it uh, for us. Thank you, Ian, uh, for, for joining us for this. Um, plug you your stuff have, away. Yo, yeah, yeah, yes, uh, please uh, plug yourself. Uh, this is your uh, great opportunity. Uh, you can find me on uh, Twitter or X, the everything app. Um, and YouTube <laughs> at Be More Brass for both. Um, and I haven't really been releasing many videos this year because I moved. So the next one is going to be about uh, Full Metal Alchemist 2003. It's ostensibly a retrospective, but it's not really. It's it's kind of just a video about the show. Um, it's hopefully the first of a couple because this was my nice video about it. <laughs> this is me. <laughs> Don't get me started, um, bro. It. I decided to treat it in this video more so as its own thing, Mm -hmm. as like a standalone story that's not based off of a manga I really like. That's different. (laughs) Um, (laughs) That's fair. And so once I get this out, I do want to go back and do one that may be a little more um, mean about the things that I don't like that have three changes. Even if it's not their fault, they changed things that didn't exist yet when they were making the anime. You're gonna have a Jedi and a Sith version. I guess. I also haven't watched. <laughs> I haven't watched Shambhala yet. I need to do that. Because we don't I, talk about Shambhala. I yeah, was, we don't. <laughs> yeah. 
I was waiting. <laughs> I wanted to judge the ending of the anime based off its own merits before I went and watched yeah. the sequel movie to see how it changed things. So I don't know what happens in the movie yet, but okay. that'll probably be the next video after. You, you could say it will leave you in shambles. Okay. <laughs> Glad to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, uh, definitely go check out uh, Ian on YouTube on Twitter slash X. I'm never calling it X. Fuck you, Elon. I won't <laughs> either, but I thought that was a funny bit, so that's why I did that. <laughs> the everything app. <laughs> Fuck you, Elon. Fuck you. Um, but yeah, um, and also, thank you everyone for stopping by to watch us talk about this tonight. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you like what you saw, want to see more, it really, really helps us out. Um, you can also check down below where you can find links to Anime Club, After Dark, on all the places we upload stuff, as well as a link to our merch store uh, down there, too. Uh, with all that being said, I have been your host, Alex, and we will see you next time. Say goodnight, guys. Good Bye. morning, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah god it's so it's so early for the tie it's like just what two o'clock in the too, morning yeah it's it's fine it's no <laughs> just biggie. a casual 2 a.m chat about anime it's fine yeah those are the best kind of chats <laughs>